Hello and welcome back everyone, it is your boy Perm and today we're gonna talk about My Hero Academia chapter 154. Now, am I the only one who's actually been anticipating this chapter for like fucking two weeks? It's been forever it feels like. Anyway, so yeah, at the beginning we see how, you know, obviously Deku kinda goes in on overhaul. Not really, you know, any sort of intense fighting going, but just kind of, I guess, just roughing up each other and shit. We have Night Dive pretty much tell, you know, Deku, okay, you guys get out of here because I can deal with this guy. Now he knows that, you know, he's not enough to deal with overhaul, but he's doing it because he wants the others to live, you know, he wants Eri to be saved. He is a hero after all, and that's what a hero should do, right? Especially seeing as he is Tugada's teacher, so everything Tugada's learned, he's most likely been learning from this guy. Okay, so Night Eye versus Overhaul is a very interesting fight because he does use a very similar technique style to that of Tugada, which is because he was the one who actually taught it to Tugada, which even Overhaul notices because he does remark that, you know, okay, this is the teacher. So he knows, you know, that these two are related in some way, most likely a teacher and student relationship. And he makes, well, he doesn't really exploit that in any sort of way, but he does kind of, or well, he does because he does tell everyone that you know okay this boy has lost his quirk forever and you see how everyone just reacts completely pale pretty much and that's what I find really interesting now because he openly said that you know okay this boy he no longer has a quirk and he's never gonna have it but if you hadn't interfered you may have still had it you know and night I just goes fucking ballistic on this guy pretty much I mean you can just tell he's the teacher he values to God a kind of like a son in a way but he well not really a son but you know what I'm saying right and so, yeah, we get this really in intense fight, mostly, you know, Naita just dodging, but we do see this really interesting part about this fight, which I, which I noticed, at least, I don't know if everyone else noticed, probably. This dude, he throws one of those stamp things that he told Izuku to fucking catch. Now, if that's not a fucking badass, I don't know what is, I mean, come on. Like, in the most serious fucking fight ever, he just throws a fucking stamp thingy at him, like, come on, man. Can't just do that. All right, so um, one other thing that really got me on edge in this fight was how we see this moment, which you know how not well how Tugada notices. I think he notices that um, Night Eye was using his foresight ability, and that of course means that he can see if someone's gonna die and shit like that. I guess now that in itself kind of gave us some death flags throughout the chapter. But at the very end, we kind of do find out that he's not gonna die, which is fortunate. I mean, we wouldn't want you know. Night Eye to die, right? I mean, we don't want anyone to die, but I kind of could see this guy dying. I mean, we did see him get kind of impaled by this thing, right? Before Deku showed up, and I'm gonna get into that in a moment. So, yeah, he got impaled, and it's looking really dark for him, and Overhaul, you know, he's not fucking hesitating. He's just going in on this guy, and yeah. Now, I want to talk about Aizawa first, because he does mention something like, the Quirk Eraser guy is very interesting, we've taken him to the VIP room. Now I believe it was Naita who said that, oh, okay, you must be really afraid of losing your Quirk. So obviously that kind of foreshadows, you know, that Aizawa is gonna play a role later on, where he is most likely going to come in after dealing with Chronostasis, and he's going to probably erase Overhaul's Quirk. And that's when they're gonna win, or at least get an edge against Overhaul. That's what I think is gonna happen, because I mean, at this point, there's just no one who can go one-on-one -on -one against Overhaul and win, I think. Because we see how Deku, which I'll get to now, he enters 20% of his power. Now, this is not without some form of backlash. He's, we see how his muscles, well, he says that his muscles are kind of like breaking apart from the inside. He can feel how badly it is hurting, you know, but he needs to do it. He can still stand. And so we're going to see a short fight between Overhaul and Deku. It's not going to be very long because of that. And after that, he's pretty much going to collapse. Now, I think at that point, we're gonna see Aizawa come in probably. Because you know, when Deku is about to fucking die pretty much by overhaul, it would make sense for the teacher to come in because he's basically Deku's teacher at this point. I mean, All Might gave him his quirk and all of that, but as far as his skills go, I would say Aizawa deserves the credit more than anyone else because he's their teacher pretty much. I mean, All Might have, has filled in a few times, but he's not the regular teacher, that's actually Aizawa. So I really do see, you know, Aizawa has come in and actually stopping Overhaul before his student is fucked. So 
one last thing that I think we should talk about is of course Miru Togata and Eri. Now these two people, right? They're obviously about to leave this place because we see how Dequias tries to help them get out of there before he joins in on the fight in order to save Night Dive because he sees how Night Dive is about to die and Dequias fucking charges in, you know? And at that point Togata continues to escape with Eri, which is kind of expected. I mean, he has no reason to fight Overhaul. I mean, he's in no condition to fight anyone and Eri's just a little girl and their primary objective happens to be to save her, not to fight Overhaul. It's actually a secondary objective. Now, he's still an objective, of course, so they're gonna do everything they can to stop him, especially given what's happened right now. But yeah, Mirio Togata is not gonna play a single part in that fight anymore, and one thing that I could see is now that he's actually, you know, escaping with Ares, that he's gonna run into Tamaki, because we did see how Tamaki actually woke up, and he hasn't really appeared on, the f on this fight. So it's very possible that he's gonna run into Tamaki, and they're gonna head out together, meet up with, you know, Nejire and Ochako and everyone else. But if not, then it's very possible that he will, you know, tell Tamaki, okay, Deku needs help, go help him out. I could also see that happening, because Tamaki is a fucking beast when it comes to fighting, and his power could be very well needed in this fight. Now, I don't really see him, you know, one on one Overhaul in this form, but imagine if, because he could pretty much restrain Overhaul once it, that is over, if Aizawa hasn't come around at that point, because we don't know when Aizawa is gonna come around. So it would be really interesting to see Tamaki play a part of some sort. I mean, I would have loved Najiri to play a part, but at this point, I just don't see that happening, because we have to remember, it's a shonen, they will focus on the male characters, not the females. That's just how things are, no matter how much we may want the female to shine. Well, I think I'm gonna end the review right there. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And as always, if you did, please like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new to my channel. This has been your favorite host, Perm, and I'll see you soon.